In this video we're going to set up the login.php script um, that is stored in our um, htdocs root folder. If you haven't seen the previous three videos I'd recommend you go back um, in the playlist and you just watch the previous three because that's where we set up the whole database and we set up the register php and we set up the register functions within unity. So now we're going to look at doing the login uh, .php. So to do that, um, you can just copy and paste our register user .php, and I will call this login .php. And I'm just going to open this in um, Visual Studio Code, so that we already have all the database credentials. We have the connection set up. We have got the um, connection error messages, and here we are now just going to um, need the user's email and the user's uh, password and again we need to md5 it so that we can um, compare the md5 hashed strings within the database so basically you're never storing or checking the user's actual password anywhere um, in your database um, we'll go and rename this to uh, login query and this we're going to have to change this up a little bit. So here we are going to just go into our PHP and we'll go here and you can see here it says select star from users where one. You don't actually need this where clause. Uh, OED. We're going to say where um, email is equal to mike at gmail.com and password is equal to password. So <clears throat> we are only going to want to return the username of this password back to our, user, uh, our Unity game. So we'll select username from users where our email matches and password matches. So we can now just go and copy this, put it back, and we can just go and paste this in here. And now what you're going to want to do is where email is equal to, and here this is where we're going to do the string concatenation again. So remember we have to add the single quotation marks, then we concatenate by using the two full stops, and then this is user email, and password is equal to concatenate user password and we can delete this because this is from the um, previous query and then we just end it off with a semicolon and what this is just going to do is it's just going to return a single username um, from the database if the user has registered if they haven't registered it's not going to return anything okay so now we've set up the connection to the database we've got the users the email and password of the user who's trying to log in and we set up our login query. So now this try catch statement is going to look a bit different for our login. So now obviously we need to swap this over to our login query, not our register query. So we're going to execute our login query. Then um, we can also just rename this to login result. And firstly, we're going to check if login result is false. That means the query failed. And now what we need to do is if the query ran successfully we need to then check our login result and we need to check how many rows it returned and we need to check if it's greater than zero so if the number of rows is greater than zero that means that the user has registered and um, all their credentials are correct okay so now what we need to do is we need to get the information from the row that was returned from our sql query so if we look here you can see this is another select query so it's basically going to return a bunch of rows where all the conditions are met in our sql query there should only be one row because there should only be one user per uh, email address so it's only going to return one row. Um, so to do that, we can create a row variable and we'll set that equal to our login result arrow fetch a sock. Then after we fetch the first row uh, from our SQL query, we are just going to echo the username. 
that is stored in that row. If the number of rows is not greater than zero, that means that there was no result, which means that the user hasn't registered yet. So we'll go and create our error message for this. We can just say 55. 55 is equal to user has not registered. And that is basically everything for our login.php script. So to recap, we've got all our database credentials. We create the connection, check if there was an error in the connection. Then we get our email and password. That will be passed to us from our Unity game. Then we create our login query. Then we execute the login query. We check if it was successful. And if it wasn't, then it's just going to um, return these either of these two numbers. Um, depending on how it fails. And if everything's successful, we check if it did return a result. And if it did, we return the username of that result. If it didn't return a result, we just uh, return 55, error code 55, which means that the user has not registered. That should be um, about everything. We can also go and test this in our browser as well, but it's not going to return any results because if you remember, we have to actually pass in the email and password. So. If you'd like to, you can just go and check to make sure that it doesn't return any error codes. So my SQL YouTube, and then it'll be login.php. Okay, it returns number 55, which we would expect because um, we didn't pass in an email or a username. I mean, an email or a password. So that means that there would be no results um, with those parameters in our database. So that means everything's running correctly. And then what we'll do in the next video is we're going to build the login um, UI functions uh, in our Unity game. So then now a user will be able to register um, as we've already created. And then once they've registered, they'll be able to log in through the UI in Unity.